Okay. All right, so we are in pre-show here and uh, getting ready for the sh show. And Dave is here and John is here. Hey, John, haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're well. Richard's here. Welcome, Richard. Prashana is here. You know, Prashana is in Nepal, Eric. And in Nepal, their time wow. zones are a half an hour off. So it's like 2.30 in the morning there <laughs> or something like that. Todd's here. Hassan what, um, is here. What part and of And you want to get into the chat? Eric, that's a question for you. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> sure, uh, I can do that. Uh, what's the easiest way to get there? I don't have any links on this computer. Eastern Shore Broadcasting. Eastern Shore. Eastern Shore Broadcasting. Dot com. Dot com. Slash. Oh, I jumped the gun. Slash. Thomas dash chat. T H O M S. T O M S. T O M S. Tom's chat. Gotcha. Tom's chat. Tom's dash chat. Oh, Tom's dash chat. That may have explained why it didn't work. Tom's dash chat. Daniel's here. Tommy's Tommy's colon is here. <laughs> I have to look closely at that one. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, Eric, we've got eight minutes to make this work. Oh, it's a troll. Okay, well, we have a, we have a kill button on the chat for trolls. Okay, so Eric, uh, we're going to start out with uh, with my monologue, and then I will introduce you, and then we will uh, establish your credentials. Should take uh, 10, 20 minutes, and then we'll get into the guts of what we're here for. It'll be fun. Right on. Eric's here. Yeah, yeah. that's me. Oh, that's you. Okay. All right. Yeah. It doesn't look a thing like you. A coincidence? I think not. Okay. High collars here. That's an interesting name. I like it. David's here. So we should be so, uh, on Facebook and YouTube. And the website. So let's see. Let's check the website. We know we're on YouTube. What about? F oh, I see. We're going live in a minute and a half on uh, Facebook. Okay. I generally put. Uh, the YouTube stream to start at quarter till and the Facebook stream to start at five till. That way I have a chance to establish one of them is operating correctly before the, the second one goes. So, Prashana, what, uh, what part of Nepal are you from? The, uh, the YouTube live feed, Eric, is on, um, we were having some problem with the low latency because it was dropping mm -hmm. frames and doing a bunch of stuff. So we switched back to their regular latency, which is about a 20 second latency. But it also allowed folks to have the DVR function, which they didn't have with the other one, so. Everybody loves DVRs. All right, I think we're in pretty good shape here. We got six seconds till we're going live on Facebook for what that's worth. 
Tommy Willis. Oh, that's who that was. Oh. <laughs> okay, and we're now live on Facebook, so that's good. Hello, and Facebook. Otis is here. Welcome, Otis. Um, Eric, you met Otis at the Streaming Idiots meetup last year. And hopefully again this year. And hopefully again this year. That's right. You did not meet Tommy Willis. We're going to Willis. tent this year, right? I don't know what we're going to do. We're not going to have enough room at at, um, at Scott's place because we were packed we'll out rent there. Out the circus, circus. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We may just put a tent in the parking lot at Scott's. That way, we still got access to a live stream and studio, but we've got some overflow space. All right. Okay. Good. This is working. All right, looks like we're in good shape there and there. And if you're watching us on Facebook, I would encourage you to come on over to easternshorebroadcasting.com because then you'll get in on the chat, which, um, which looks like, um, what does it look like? It looks like that. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> it should look like that, except that needs to reload. Hang on a second. Then it comes back right now. There we go. That's the chat. There you go. You can get in on the chat because nobody's monitoring the Facebook chat. The official, the official Streaming Idiots chat is, is that chat that was just over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tommy says he's got connections. He can get us a whole building for the meetup. Good deal. Like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. All right, we got three minutes, Eric. Whatever it is you're doing, you've got a clock ticking on you. Guest 265, Hi. welcome. We always wonder if somebody comes in with a, with a guest number like 265, if that has some personal significance to you. Um, so if it does, we'd love oh. to know what it is. Otherwise, <laughs> we're just, it's just a number. <clears throat> Excuse me, Justice. Need some lemonade. All right. Let's see. If you're watching this on Facebook or on YouTube directly, please come over to easternshorebroadcasting.com so you can get in on the on the chat, which looks like this. Yes, it does. Okay, so we'll go back here. There we go. All right, so, uh, hey, how is everybody doing? Holy cow. It is uh, a week. No, today is Halloween. You can tell by my Halloween costume. Eric didn't even notice earlier. And, uh, That's why. A minute and a half, but no pressure, Eric. Clint says, I don't know why I'm listed as a guest. Well, Clint, did you pay your dues? <laughs> oh, I'm just teasing. There are no dues. If, if, if there were dues, I would be the first one to want my money back. Let me tell you. Hey, Nick. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. Okay, that was just a chair moving across the room in case you guys thought it was something else. That was just a chair. Richard Otis, Todd Tommy, High Collar, Rich. Rich is here. Hey, Rich. Rich, where, where are you this weekend, Rich? Are you in California or are you on the road somewhere? Love to know. Rich is the one that does the jet ski racing and has had, I don't know how many million viewers in his lifetime. <laughs> yeah, Eric is having a Thomas moment. <laughs> Eric, can you hear me? Yeah. I got it. Okay. No, I, I realized why my PTZ Optics camera wasn't working with the Scarhoy controller. It's because I never plugged it in via Ethernet. It's kind of important. Uh -huh. Well, there's just those One of those things. basic things. You, yeah, Ethernet. Remember Ethernet. that in the future. Troubleshooting? Yeah. Did you plug it in? Yep. Yep. Okay. <sighs> All right. I've got a kill button for Eric. i got a kill button for me. <laughs> 
Uh, Clint has paid his dues. <laughs> yeah, Clint, I know what you mean. It's what Dave Ramsey calls his stupid tax. All the mistakes that you paid for. Part of your education. In the School of Hard Knocks. The School of Hard Knocks, I don't know if that's more expensive than a traditional college or not. Yeah, which one of those lights is giving me a little extra? Oh, it's over here. Oh. I'm official. One second. All right, it's game time. Uh oh, what have we done here? Can I do that? Maybe. <laughs> now Tom's having a Tom moment. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, that wasn't even it, so let me turn it back on. I'm still dealing with the, an array of do-it-yourself lighting, and I'm trying to trying to move over to something that's more professional, but it's one step at a time. Jerome is here. Hey, Jerome. Eric, you met Jerome at the meetup also. Ken Richards here. Hey, Ken. Glad to have you. Tonight is Ken's night. You know why? Because Ken works for Spangler Candy Company. And this is their big night of the year. They make dum-dums. Ah. The official candy of Streaming Idiots. <laughs> is there a better match? <laughs> dum-dums for Streaming Idiots? <laughs> I'll say it for the second time for those of you that didn't get it the first time around. <laughs> Peter's here. Etronic's here. Good, good. Glad to have you. Chris is here. Finally, Chris. Just take your time. Show up whenever you can. Gee whiz. Kenny's here. Hey, Kenny. Um, Eric, you met Kenny at the meetup meet up also. Hey, so everybody. It's like old home Good to see week. you again. There you go. All right. So, we should do uh, this on Zoom so that I can see them all back. Well, we did that last week, two weeks yeah. ago. You were there. I missed that. Uh, Jens is here. Oh, and yes. I was there. Yes, you were. Let's see. Who else has popped in? I can't believe uh -huh. that was only last week or two weeks ago. I know. Scott's here. Hey, Scott. Glad to have you. Don't see Scott very much. He's, he's been real busy being successful and all that stuff. All right. Well, let's get this show on the road, shall we? Um, Eric, I'm going to mute hey, you. Hey, Scott, I've got your PTZ Pro right here. <laughs> Daniel says you need the new X-Keys uh, GPIO module and some relays to control your lights through vMix. Ooh. Yeah. That sounds like a winner. I have no clue what you're talking about, but it sounds interesting. So let's let we'll do that next week. All right. So I'm going to mute Eric. And you notice that all of a sudden that hum went went off, and um, we are going to get uh, we're going to go get started. So everybody get something to drink. I've got lemonade or peach your feet up or put it up on a big screen. Remember, you can pop out the chat. You're like, pop out the chat. Tom, I'm watching on Facebook. Well, if you're watching on Facebook, you need to come over to easternshorebroadcasting.com and make sure that you hit the Watch Live tab at the center, and that will bring you into the stream, the same stream, but with the chat, so you can get in on the chat. Josh is here. Made it. Josh made it. Good deal. Glad to have you. Um, let's see, let's check and make sure anybody else didn't slip in while we weren't, we're, we weren't paying attention. Um, I don't see anybody new on the list. I could have overlooked you. If, if you just popped in, say hi to everybody else. Um, and what else did I want to say? I don't know. It'll come to me later. All right, here we go. Sit tight. Sit tight and three. Two, one. Ha <laughs> welcome. I'm Tom Sinclair. This is Streaming Idiots. This is the penultimate, no, not really. I was going to say this is the penultimate live streaming show on the internet, but you know, there are only like a thousand others that, or maybe more than that, 
probably most that are better than this. But, uh, but this one is a lot of fun. Um, glad to have you with us this afternoon. If you haven't already, please join us in chat. You can get the chat at easternshorebroadcasting.com. Hit the Watch Live tab. So if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or Twitch or something like that, come on over to Eastern Shore Broadcasting so you can get in with all the cool kids in chat. Um, yeah, and you got to keep an eye on Tommy Willis. So, so pay no pay, pay no attention to anything he says. Really excited about my guest today, Eric Pratt from U.S. Broadcast Distribution. Eric has written a little app. I guess we call it an app. I don't know. We'll have to get him to tell us exactly what he calls it, but it allows us to control vMix based on time. So if you want to start a stream at midnight and you don't care to be there, it's just a video or something like that. He's got the app for that. So we'll bring Eric on in just a second and talk about that. You won't want to miss that. And he's going to demo it. And you're not going to be able to, you can't match the price. <laughs> Let's try that. Uh, first couple pieces of business. Got to, get the, got to get the business out of the way. Mark your calendars right now for April 9th. April 9th. What is April 9th? April 9th is... The Streaming Idiots Meetup at NAB 2019 in Las Vegas. So if you haven't already made your hotel reservations, you're going to miss all the good good places, and uh, you got to get all the cheap airfares. So now is the time, like November is the time to book it. Um, so make sure when you're at NAB, you stay over that Tuesday night. Remember, Tuesday night, April the 9th, is when we have the Streaming Idiots Meetup. We were overwhelmed with the number of folks that came last year. we got to find a bigger venue. So... But we, we want you to come. It'll be a whole lot of fun, and you'll meet all these people that you've been corresponding with by email and text and, and all sorts of other cool things uh, throughout the year. You get to meet them in person, and that's, that's just a ton of fun. I love it. It's one of, my, one, of my favorite, one of my favorite events of the year is the Streaming Idiots Meetup, April 9th, the Tuesday of NAB. Okay, got it? Got it. All right, here we go. But if you can't wait till then and you want to come hang out with me, I would love to have you come hang out with me. I'm going to be in Orlando in two weeks at the WFX uh, Expo. That's the Church Effects uh, show in Orlando on November. Well, actually, the, the conference is like the 13th, 14th, and 15th, but the show, the trade show, is the 14th and 15th. I'm going to be there. That's when we're giving away that, uh, that church live streaming PC system. We're going to do that on Thursday the 15th live right there on the show floor. Uh, you have to be present somewhere to win. I think you have to be present online or in person. So you'll want to be there. On, on the 14th, Paul Richards from PTZ Optics and I are going to be walking the floor of the, the trade show. Now, this is a church trade show, so it's not going to be your typical technology show, but there'll be some interesting things there that you might might want to take a look at. So we'll be walking the show, doing a live stream from the floor, and taking turns being the camera guy. It'll be that, you know, I'll probably end up on tam camera most of the time. You know how that goes. Anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. So come, uh, come pop in. There's a booth for PTZ Optics there at the trade show, and... Um, I'm not sure what the booth number is, but I don't think it's an incredibly large show, so it should be pretty easy to find them. I'll be there. Paul will be there. Uh, Paul's brother, Matthew, will be there, and Pat will be there. So it'll be a good good show of folks, and it'll be a lot of fun. Come hang out with us. And, uh, yes, I may have a few vMix <laughs> mouse pads there to give away, too. Um, also, don't forget, and more important than, than almost anything else that I've said, is that that this this show is a giant infomercial? Yes, it is an infomercial. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's an infomercial for my company, Eastern Shore Broadcasting, where we design and build custom streaming PCs. Got one on the workbench right now, headed for a really cool Baptist church in a couple of days. And by the way. Uh, I, I need to send an email and let them know how it's going. We also represent X keys. In fact, this system is going out with some X keys. This system is going out with some PTZ optics cameras. It's it's going to be really really great. But we also represent um, Magewell and Yuan and Panimation and Ada and Splice and uh, Bird Dog TV. And we actually can get a hold, believe it or not, we can get a hold of some of the new tech products. So if you'd like to deal, deal with me personally, um, I'd be delighted to deal with you personally. 
<laughs> and provide tech support on all this stuff. So it, it'll be a lot of fun. You can get more information at our website at easternshorebroadcasting.com. Uh, Tommy, the trade show is in Orlando in two weeks, uh, November 13th, excuse me, 14th and 15th at the Orange County Convention Center. Uh, there you go. So, all right, so let's, let's get this thing figured out. We got Eric here. I think we've done all the business. If I've forgotten a piece of business, you know, my apologies, we'll catch it. Hey, shout out to Martin. All these, these, these effects um, that we have right here, here we go. We'll, sh we'll show you this, this effect again. Boom. Martin did those effects. Thank you so much, Martin. We continue to enjoy them. I hope you were here just a second ago when we did the infomercial effect. Martin did all that custom animation behind me. It was just, uh, you know, what a treat. Thank you. RJ's here. Hey, RJ. Glad to have you. The weather's finally calmed down where you can get off the camera and get, uh, get in front of a monitor. Good deal. Who else might have just popped in? Calvin just popped in. All right. Glad to have you. And if I missed you, somehow if I missed, missed you on the list, I apologize. If you're watching us on Facebook or on YouTube, you want to make sure that you come over to easternshorebroadcasting.com so you can get in on the chat, the good chat, because in just a second, I mean just merely seconds, I don't, I don't wear a watch anymore since I started carrying the cell phone, but in merely seconds we're going to have Eric Pratt here to talk about his super basic vMix scheduler. In fact, with no further ado, Let's go ahead and bring Eric in to the show. Eric, can you hear us? Are you there? Yeah, we finally got the uh, audio issues ironed out, though I guess you're hearing a little bit of a hum from my computer. That's because my microphone is about a foot from the exhaust port because I wasn't able to find my normal lapel mic. Uh, after NAB New York, my office is in a bit of chaos, so I apologize. This was kind of a last minute dash to get this all put together. It was, and I, and I appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy schedule of finding your microphones and all that kind of stuff to, uh, to come on Streaming Idiots or today. Not. And uh, Eric, Eric is a, um, I, I, I guess you would say he is a, a wholesaler. He's a distribution point to people like me for a number of products. Um, primary for me are the, uh, the Panimation software, the Telestrator software, yep. and the Yuan Capture Yuan. Cards. And we're also exploring the uh, the Ada 4K camera, which uh, um, yep. I'm very interested in, and the Scar Hoy controllers, which is sort of a kind of a computer embedded in a, a, a control surface. So uh, we'll, yeah. we'll be exploring those some more in the future. But today, we have got something that is uh, that probably exceeds all of those in value, but not in cost. And yeah. it's a little, it's a, it's a piece of software that Eric has written, and and Eric, tell tell us what it is and what it does because I'm sure I'm going to botch it. So uh, about a week ago, I think uh, I've I've always wanted to have some way of controlling other vMix computers. So I'm, I have a vMix computer here, and that I'm not actually doing the I'm not actually doing the show it. So I have another one over there, and I want to be able to control that vMix computer from here. But I'd never gotten around to actually writing out uh, an application for doing this. You can just you know do it using what are called API commands, which are just little strings of information you can enter into a browser. And it was Akeem Saunders who had said, "What's the easiest way to start and stop a stream at a certain time?" And I've, I've heard this, you know, we've been distributing vMix for years now, and I've heard this request over and over again. And, um, there is a, a vMix scheduler, some, something that a third party had written, but I, I guess there are, are problems with it. Um, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but I've never, you know, it, it doesn't seem to work for most people. And this is not a complex task, being able to start and stop a stream at a particular time. And I am... Uh, as I've told just about everybody, I'm a terrible, terrible programmer. You should never let me program anything. But this program is only 177 lines of code. And that's because it's actually a really simple thing. And all I've done is made a super tiny, simple program that reads a text file, which says what URL to send, which in the case of an API command to start and stop streaming, reads something like IP address, slash API slash function start stop streaming. And there's a couple other, you know, characters and stuff in there. I'll show you when we go look at my desktop in a couple minutes. Um, 
So it's actually really simple. And then uh, I also specify a time, uh, a start and a stop time. So if Tom wanted to use this, um, I don't know what he's using to start and stop his show, but if you wanted to have um, this application start and stop, <laughs> Tom's pushing the button. If Tom wanted this to automatically start and stop, in fact, I've been getting towards the direction where I can set up his entire show via API commands and he can just sit there and talk. So he doesn't need to focus on switching the show. And there's a lot of appeal for being able to automate a command for vMix. Um, and that's that's what I've done. It's a really simple program. It took me, it would have taken Martin probably 10 or 15 minutes to write. It would have taken an average programmer maybe an hour. It took me like four or five, um, but it was over the weekend. I had some time. I actually really enjoy programming. And if um, I was any good at it, I would be doing that instead of what I'm doing, but I'm actually good at distribution and manufacturers repping. And I am passionate about both things. Um, so it's actually really fun that I was able to program something for a change that's useful to people in the vMix community. And I don't really feel like this is something that I want to charge money for because A, it would have taken somebody like an hour to write and B, um, I think it's just nicer to release it out there because it's something that can be really helpful to people. What a nice guy. Gee whiz. <laughs> don't let me fool you. <laughs> so no, without worry. further ado, let's take a quick Not look fun. at it. Okay, let's um, do that. The, the, the program is called uh, HTTP Matrix, and I'm going to switch to my desktop here so you don't have to look at the side of my head. Um, so you should be seeing my desktop now. And you see your very familiar area of vMix over here. And in the upper left-hand corner are these nine buttons. Uh, this is the program itself. And it's called HTTP Matrix. Uh, and I don't know why I called it that way, um, because it uses HTTP commands. And what are HTTP commands? If I wanted to go into a browser, I'm going to just open up a browser here real quick, and enter in this command. This is the example command. If you type in vMix uh, API, this is the example command that they give. It's a fade. Uh, and I'm just going to break it down for you guys. I hope you can read this. But 127.00 means localhost. We could also put the IP address of this machine in here, which is 192.168.1.16 or something like that. And then there's some other gobbledygook. Uh, the really important thing here is fade. And then there's an option for duration. So there's a bunch of these different commands. And if you're at all familiar with shortcuts, this is super easy to learn. So if I hit this command in the browser, you'll see it should uh, dissolve um, my program in preview above. And it says function completed successfully. Now you could just sit here and paste these commands in, but that's kind of um, you know problematic. I'd actually done a nice little demo on uh, how to you how to write your own H, uh, HTML based API command interface, but it's a little bit above you know, your average user. So this program um, uses just a simple text interface and it's this, see all this text here? Um, it might look a little bit intimidating, but it's actually pretty easy to use. This text is what informs what is all going on up here. So if you look at this, where it says fade here, this is the label. And that command that I just used, that example vMix command, that is what happens when I click fade. So when I click fade, it does a dissolve. But then I've also set it so that it fades at 10, 17, 30 a.m. And then this isn't a good example of a start stop. I could also make it fade again later. But uh, this next one down is stream. So there are a couple of examples that it comes with. Uh, start and stop streaming, start and stop recording. So here it's going to start recording at 10, 18, 20 a.m. And it's going to stop recording at 10, 18, 50 a.m. Um, what I'm actually using this for is I'm actually using this to control uh, the other system. So when I do demos of my, um, when, when I make demo videos, I actually start and stop record on another machine. And if I click Ajax Rec, this is going to turn on um, record for the Ajax machine, which is the machine that I actually record to. Uh, and this will run fade on it. And these three are the ones that I'm using to run this show. So I can switch back and forth to my camera. Or I can go to the output of this system. So I can bring up this USB camera. 
or I can go back to my uh, desktop output. So you should be back to seeing my desktop. And that's it in a nutshell. Um, I, I've written some extra information and let me drop this uh, into chat here uh, so you guys can all have the link uh, unless somebody's already done that. There. So that's that's the link. Uh, you can download the program, and we've done a special uh, Streaming Idiots edition, which for a limited time, no, I'm just kidding, includes a new program <laughs> called uh, HTTP Matrix List. And HTTP Matrix List is another, I was kind of been thinking about different um, uh, different ways that we can take this same idea uh, instead of having nine buttons, somebody might say, well, I want a tenth button. And in case of that, what do you do? Some people don't need buttons at all on this little screen. So what I did is I created a list version. And the list version just goes through that list. So if you want to set up your entire show for a day, you can set up 100 commands the time that you want them to go off. So start recording, pull up input one, run your preview pull up input two, pull up input three. It's entirely scripted show. This way you could automate a town council meeting or something along those lines. And then the next one that I'm going to do uh, is sort of like that one, except for, um, let me put it back to desktop so you can see. This is HTTP matrix list. So this is fade at 641, record. These times aren't great examples, but start and stop stream. But you get the idea is that you can create a list uh, again, using a text file that just starts and stops um, streaming, recording, switching between your inputs, uh, and on and on. Anything that you can do with the API commands, which is just about everything that vMix can do. The next version is going to be a rundown list. So instead of doing this at specific times, you'll just click a button and say, next, next, next. So you can just step through your entire production that way if that's helpful to some people too. So it's going to be like a little suite of programs that use text files to fire off API commands when the user wants them to go. How do you like them apples? Oh, and it's free, of course, as I mentioned. So, Tom. <laughs> I'm speechless. Oh, let me, uh, there we go. So that's, um, that's that. Uh, I know I may have gone through that very quickly. Were there any questions that I could answer on it? Yeah, I've got like 10 right here. You. You. Ask a question. Well, while everybody else cues those all right, up. Go. All right. So, so I've got this text file, and all I'm doing is editing a text file? Yes. And, and the, the app looks to the text file for directions of what to do when you mash mash a button. So if I um, want or a certain time occurs. Oh so mash a button or hit a particular time. So okay. So the app is, is has already read the text file and it has in the text yes. file in its brain, okay, I want to start the live stream in ten minutes. Uh, or no no not in ten minutes, but at 10 o'clock 245 yeah. 245 yeah because because will it do uh, based on duration instead of based on time no uh, right now it's based <laughs> on um, the clock time okay okay all right got it all right so you're getting some questions there um, let's see um, rich says but how do I stream <laughs> well, rich, rich. <laughs> well uh, you can do YouTube, Facebook, uh, there's a variety of CDNs. Um, if you want can to turn you, streaming on and off, there's an example in the text file. Can you pick which streamer to stream to? Anything that the API commands can do. Anything can that do, the API will do. The, right. Yeah, so right. The, the API can turn an on and off individual stream channels. Um, if you want to know what a list of API commands uh, vMix can do, because um, there isn't a list of API commands, just go into your shortcuts and click the all, all categories and then scroll through it. And it's pretty much send NDI metadata, start and stop replay, turn overlays on and off. There's uh, basically every function of vMix 
is accessible through shortcuts, which are 95% of everything that you need to know about running an API command. Because API commands are essentially IP address, shortcut, and then occasionally some extra data like what input, value. you know, yeah. um, bring up, yeah, value. Right. Okay, well, let's... So you let's can practice the API commands. Go on. Let's do one. Let's do one from my show. All right, so, okay. so flip flip back to uh, to that uh, full screen version that shows your desktop. And and let's do one. I've got two PCs here, and I've got my second PC that I use as my streaming PC. And so you need to know that the IP address uh, on the net the address the network address for that that PC, right? Yep. Okay, so it's 192.168. I'm going to use one. mine instead, but... Oh, you're going to yeah. use yours instead. Oh, well, let's see, I just was yeah. going to cut so, and paste it. Because I'm not on your network. So I typed in 192.168.1.116, which is my other machine. Okay, and then the 80... And, and then what do you want it to do? I want it to uh, start streaming. All right. So you... So stream. you can change the title. The titles don't have to be in a particular order. No. So the title is this, uh, the first, what what the button is labeled. So right, right. now I'm changing this button number six here. Uh, I'm going to change it from input three to stream. I already have a oh, stream button, but that's oh, from this oh, 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 I see. Okay. So yep. so basically it's the, so the, the sixth stream, line down. I'll call this, yep. Okay. So I'm going to call this stream Tom. All right. Um, and then start and stop streaming is this function up here but let's I'll, I'll do another example in just a second of okay how uh the people at home and then if you wanted that to start at your show starts at 2 45 and 0 uh, p.m and then it goes until let's call it four okay let's call it four four zero zero so this would this what this would do and i'm going to hit i'm going to hit save this is actually uh you know dave edwards of course you do uh dave edwards just before the show suggested that i uh add a way of refreshing the this data ah. so if i make a change to this i can update this this little okay. button watch right here this okay. area where it says input three i'm going to hit refresh and now it there says it stream is. tom and it says 2 45 p.m to 4 p.m and awesome. that lets you know that when this hits 2 45 it's going to start streaming, and when it's 4 p.m., it's going to stop streaming. Well, and actually, in your example, it's going to start start and stop recording because that's the, the API oh, command you sorry. used. Oh, uh, sorry. That's okay. That's yep. okay. You we, are we, correct. We got it. No. Easy enough to fix. Uh, stream Tom. Yeah, you're right. Start. So this is start and stop streaming. But right. let's take a look at uh, how we would grab, how would we, we would create... So I was telling you about shortcuts, how you yeah. can get the information from shortcuts. So let's yeah. go to shortcuts. Um, so in function here, under all, these are all the different kinds of API. I mean, there's a Holy lot. Cow. So if I wanted to do a particular transition, let's say cut, or let's do overlay. I want to turn an overlay on and off. I'm going to do overlay input four. Okay. Um, so I'm going to turn overlay four on the other machine on and off. Uh, overlay input four. So I'm going to change this to overlay, and I'm going to call it function is overlay input four. And now I also need to tell it in this case what uh, what input I want to put in overlay input four, um, which is uh, number twenty two. So I'm going to hit save. Uh, I'm also going to just uh, copy these guys over here because I don't want it starting and stopping my overlays at a certain time. And now if I hit refresh, this says overlay. And it didn't update those. but uh, And I should get an overlay. So you see Eric Pratt, US Broadcast Distribution. Now that's not on this system. That's on another system. And then I can turn it off again. So I'm... Basically, I'm using this to control how this other system is working. And there is no limit to what you can do 
as long as vmix can do it, the API command can do it. If the API commands can do it, HTTP matrix can do it on a schedule or just as little buttons here. That's awesome. That is that is that is amazing. So this in in some yeah, ways it's, it's similar to what the scripting will do in vmix 4K and Pro, uh, where you, where you're you're making you can make calls on another computer. So here you've done the same thing. Mm -hmm. That folks that Using have the, the vmix uh, HD or basic HD or SD or basic SD version can now do some of the same things that that would would that couldn't be done before. Well, I guess they could be done if you knew. You could just type it into a browser, yeah. right? Yes, but this organizes those browser controls into a single interface that you can wire up as buttons or trigger at certain times. Uh huh. Uh huh. Hmm. And you don't need to have a copy of vMix on the system that you're controlling it from. So you could run this on a laptop or a Windows tablet or a Windows... Uh, they still make Windows phones? No, I don't think so. Um, and uh, it's not beyond imagination. I can probably pretty easily make this for Android or iPhone. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. And it'd probably be harder to edit the text file. It's easiest... Yeah. Windows is kind of easy. Yeah, yeah. But but for... Let's not get yeah. carried away. Yeah, no, 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 no. But this is cool. This is cool. And so this, I mean, really, this could become a 24-hour scheduler if you wanted to yes. go in and... I mean, it is. It's a super basic vMix scheduler. Super basic. I wasn't sure whether it was a it's super not a basic vMix scheduler or a super basic vMix scheduler. But you're saying it's, it's a super latter, basic. But it could be the former. It might. Yeah. Might end up being the former. Uh, okay, so now yeah, let's I get into some of the questions. How cool you think it is. I think All it's right. amazingly cool. Okay. All right, so uh, Etonic says, how do you start the app? Well, you download it, and you install it, and it puts mm -hmm. desktop icons on there. And then you go yeah. in and you edit so the config file, which is just a little text file, right? And then yes. Now, editing the text notes. file is probably the most the most complex part of this because um, a lot of people have said that uh, it's difficult to locate where it is. Um, on the link that I put in chat, there's some instructions, and it says where the folder it goes into. Program data vmix HTTP matrix, and it's called default config.txt. So once you can find that file then you can open it up in Notepad and you can edit it. Um, after that, uh, it's kind of up to you to figure out how uh, API commands work. Um, you know, I'm sure you can hop into the Streaming Idiots forum and always ask, how do I do a particular uh, API command? I'm trying to start and stop streaming. But the Notepad file that comes with this is full of examples of how to select an input, how to start and stop recording, how to start and stop streaming. Um, and you know, I'm always happy to answer questions, or you can just do as we went through the shortcuts. Okay, all right, well, kind of guess. quick time out, and uh, remind you that if you want to get in on the chat, you can come on over to easternshorebroadcasting.com and click the Watch Live tab, and that will get you in on the chat, because we can see that Kurt and Jim, and Mark, and Guido, and Cliff, and Tom, and Jesse have all come into the chat, so we're, we're glad to have you guys. If you can't get here on time, just show up whenever you can. That's, the, that's what it is. All right, so, so let's say, um, dun, 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 dun. RJ had to leave. Mark says, how is this different than the native API vMix browser? I think they're talking about the web control. Yeah, so the web control um, is, it's actually <laughs> it's actually a lot more elaborate. Um, you can control another system from the web control, but it doesn't have all of the functions that the API has. It's a very prefixed set of controls. Um, the other thing, the really important thing, is that it isn't set up to start and stop things at a certain time. So this is sort of, think of it as a level of customization. These nine buttons can be any control that vMix has. 
Um, you can turn an overlay on and off using the vMix web controller, but it, you have to go and find it in the grid. And um, I mean, it's it's well thought out and it does give you all the control necessary, but it can be a little bit confusing. During live production, I like things to be simple. So for this live production, if I was using web controller to control that other machine to turn, to switch between my different inputs, I would have the full thing up on my screen and I'd be like, all right, and just make sure, I did, did I click the right one? This, I've got three buttons. I've got three different inputs to switch between and I can't screw it up because there's only three of them. Pretty, pretty hard to mess that up. But that's one function of the way that this works. The other, the reason why I actually went ahead and bit off a piece of my weekend to do this is to make it so that people can start and stop streaming. Now, there are any number of houses of worship that um, need to be able to start streaming at a certain time but don't necessarily have an operator or have the operator is doing other functions. Um, I know that our at our house of worship, uh, it would it would be nice if we could start streaming at a certain time so this would be a perfect application for that so that's kind of the um, the the crux the focus of it is to be able to trigger API commands at a certain time or just make it a really simple way of uh, organizing your commands to run multiple vmix systems so I could have these top three be this vmix system the next three be another vmix system so some people run multiple copies of vmix for certain reasons um, this would let them organize and simplify that workflow awesome baby awesome i like it i like it so you've got nine buttons <laughs> yeah and in each of those nine buttons i can put a control so if I've got that can start and stop at a certain time, but so if I've got a button that says um, that says overlay, hmm. am I limited to just? All right, let me let me back up. Did I see where you had more than nine controls on something somewhere? Yeah. So I was thinking about the question yeah. that you're asking which is what do you do if you ask. have more yeah. than nine commands yeah. yeah yeah so that's um that's this limited edition uh streaming idiots version of http matrix called http matrix list so if you go to that same that in that program it'll download uh another program called http matrix list and http matrix that's going to get really tiresome saying that over and over again um that matrix list version uh, just lets you script all of your commands sequentially. A hundred, a thousand, I don't know what the limit is. Um, so you can turn overlay one on and off a hundred times over the course of a day if you need to. You could use this to automate certain commands during a show um, that, you know, every once in a while put my bug up. I now no longer need to think about putting my bug up. Like, oh, should I run the bug? Every, you know, five minutes, run it for 30 seconds. And that's, that's one less thing I have to do. So I can be still running vMix, but this program in the background is automating some of my tasks. There's an infinitude of applications. You just need to understand how the API commands work and grok the whole idea of triggering things at certain times. Okay, I got a follow-up question yeah, a to, the, to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, so so I've got eleven commands that I want to do, but I only have nine buttons. I still don't get how I get yeah. those extra two in there. There, I'll show you. Uh, can you show switch back me. to me? Show me. Yes. So you should see um, this version here called it. I should have. It should be called HTTP Matrix List. But this is a different version. So if you look down here where it says HTTP matrix, that's this guy, the nine button version. If you see HTTP matrix list, this is the list version. And this will run a hundred or a thousand. So it's a different program. It's the same program, but it's a different program. So it's the same sort of program that just, it's organized in a different way for a different purpose for people that want to schedule a hundred overlays turning on and off over the course of a day. Right. So, 
I was already, I was kind of thinking about the answer to the question that you're asking and the next question that I'm going to answer is how do I just do a rundown? So I'll call it HTTP matrix rundown and I'll put two buttons on it which will be next and last. And instead of triggering it at a time, it'll just let you step through it. And I think after that I'll be done. I'll just drop the mic and just be like, peace. <laughs> so you say. So you say. Wow. All right. So we'll uh, it is rich. fun. Programming is fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like taking out the trash, and washing the dog. I love it. <laughs> um, rich suggested that you just call it the HLM. The HLM. Yeah. A and he also that would be asked. Less of a mouthful. Can't you just use Windows Task Scheduler to do the same thing? Sure. Nobody, exactly. nobody seems to be able to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, so this right. is a super basic vMix scheduler. It's just a really easy program with a text list. Um, there are other ways of solving these problems, but as the one of the conduits of people that get asked these kinds of questions over and over again, I wanted to answer this question in a simple and free and definitive way, and that's what this application is designed to be something that, you know, almost anybody can use a text editor. Not everybody knows how API commands work, but if you need help setting up your API commands, you know, feel free to post in the forum about it. I'll be happy to answer. Um, it's really simple. Okay, you know uh, use it. Kirk says that Norton wouldn't allow the program to run. Norton has flagged you, uh, Eric, as a virus manufacturer, yeah. and you're going to be Ooh, shut down yes. momentarily. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not a big fan of Norton, so I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I use malware virus. Bites. Don't put virus protection actively on your PCs that you're streaming. It just it, it you it's it's like throwing an anchor out the window of your car and tying it to your bumper. You know, yeah. you don't need to be slowed down by that. Yeah. So I didn't sign the app. I have a, a leftover certi signing certificate from a program called Intensikey that I wrote like years ago. Um, but then it would show up as Intensikey and everybody would be like, who the heck is Intensikey? And already it's, I've used the Virtual Setworks EULA because Virtual Setworks at least has some liability protection so that it's not technically a U.S. broadcast product because U.S. broadcast is a distributor. It's highly circuitous, the whole liability of, you know, making software applications. So I'm hoping the whole giving it away free uh, means you're on your own. Don't break things. If you do, All right. it's your problem. Here's a good question. Kelvin <laughs> says, since it uses API commands, is it limited to the Pro and 4K versions? No. You're thinking that through a second time. Yeah. I don't ever use anything other than Pro. Um, Aren't I snobby? Uh, uh, Somebody's going to have to test I'm it. Pretty sure. Because you can pretty use shortcuts sure all in versions HD. take API commands. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just can't do scripting in the HD and yeah. lower. Right. Yes. I am 98.76% certain that you can use API commands on all versions of Unix. There's always that 1.3%. That Tommy says it. this is for us real idiots, and of course idiots is misspelled. Uh, <laughs> Did he use a it, one? <laughs> Etronic says that automating the bug is going to be a big bonus for him. There you go. I think, I, yeah, I think that's a great idea. I think that's that's. This is only the tip of the iceberg in terms of, you know, I'm sure we could sit here and uh, think of different applications for it all day long. It's kind of one of those things you put it out there and let people go wild with it. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, um, I'll come up with a couple different versions for applications, but if somebody thinks of a different way of doing this same kind of thing where you have a, you know, API commands and a text file, um, so I've got nine buttons, I've got rundown version, uh, and I've got just running through a list of certain times. Those three, uh, if you can think of a fourth, let me know. Um, happy to make it some there weekend. You go. Well, well done, sir. During the week. 
I've got to work. So yeah, with uh, the right. remaining 19 minutes, do you start it? Do you stop at four? What's the deal? Or are you, we just wrapping it up? Oh, it's a half an hour show. I We're 15 minutes over. Oh, s- but we go over every week. It's okay. It's okay. The sponsors don't mind. Since I'm the sponsor. I wanted to show you my new Scarhoy controller. Oh, come on. Well, let's do that in post-show. Okay. I mean, there's really no difference at all. It's all the same feed, but but it, post-show is a little bit more comfortable. So let me let me let me close <laughs> out. Let me close out this show, and we'll mute uh, mute Eric, and we'll say, if, if you're watching live, <laughs> hang around. In fact, if you're watching after the fact, we're going to record the whole post show, so you get the post show too. Um, but big thanks to Eric for, for coming on the show today and doing this. If you have more questions, uh, hang around. We'll be right back in the post show. And remember that, <laughs> that this entire show is an infomercial for my company, EasternShoreBroadcasting.com, where you can get outstanding software like this for absolutely free. And we are, you know what I forgot to mention before? We are actually a vMix reseller. I did forget to mention that because this is a vMix app that we're talking about. Anyway, we will, uh, we'll see you on a, a new show next week where we will have um, uh, Paul Richards with BTC Optics on the show to talk. So, but in the meantime, in the meantime, we're going to say goodbye for now, and we will catch you next time. But again, stick stick around for the post show. <laughs>
You can yeah. do it. Your email to me earlier today had such good grammar in it that I was just impressed. Not impressed any longer, but I was impressed then. Um, okay, so so if I'm playing around with this software and I've got vMix open, I can accidentally trigger a bunch of commands if I've got that 127001 address already in there. I mean, because this 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 little app, as soon as you, you fire it up, it trouble. takes over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it things are going to start happening. Yes. Yeah, for example, what time is it now? I mean, for example, I've, I, I think I set it to, to automatically mute the guest at, at 2.50 p.m. And pff, there you go. I have to unmute you. Yeah. You're back. You can get yourself in trouble with it, but... Um, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. So if I want to do just one button, do I need to go in and blank out all the other? You can just, well, I wonder what happens if you delete them. Probably. Or maybe I just the change the, I can't change the button name because that doesn't do anything. It's, it's the, the button is still the button. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it liked that. <laughs> yeah, I should be able to make it so that uh, you can delete the buttons. That shouldn't be too hard. Because because the way it's currently set up, the Streaming Idiots edition of the Matrix list actually doesn't have anything that's that's queued to start anywhere near this time right now. But had it. I mean, I've got it running right now. It it, it might have done some things mm -hmm. in this show that that I would say, oh my gosh, what's going on here? Like start or stop streaming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because because that one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one is this PC. Okay. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I, Be I, careful. I, I'm not responsible for misuse. Yeah, yeah, let's see, what else does it say? Start and stop recording? Oh, man. Okay. All right. I'm loving it. I've, Let me I show you something cool. else cool. Oh, golly, okay. All right. What else we got that's cool? Uh, bring me full screen, please. Yes, sir. This is my new favorite Scarhoy controller. Ooh. This is currently controlling vMix and PTZ Optics at the same time. This little uh -huh. joypad is controlling the PTZ camera, and this is controlling the zoom. So I can have four cameras, so I'm using this uh, to switch. Let's see, how can I... Am I... I am... You are seeing me switching. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So I'm switching between my three different outputs, um, these first three, and then if I wanted to, um, I am now on the PTZ camera, so I'm using the little joypad. I'm not even using this great big old uh, Scarhoy PTZ controller. I'm just using, or I'll even just move this out of the way. So this guy is controlling my left and right, up and down, and this is controlling my in and out. And then I have things like rate limit, luminance, sharpness, uh, et cetera. Um, and then I'll go back to my desktop. And the way that I control that is through the web API. How I program this, I have the PTZ Optics uh, core loaded and the vMix core loaded. And I basically have programmed these different inputs. If you like programming, um, this is another simple way of programming this device, how to, uh, this is how, this is one of the presets. Um, here, I'll open up the whole configuration. Basically on a granular level, I can tell it what I want each one of these buttons to do. So auto uh, is vMix cut or fade. Um, the shift button is a four-way button. There's a lot of really cool things that this one does. And uh, I'll switch back to 
desktop. Nope, you're on desktop. Ajax can't, so you can see me. So that is uh, the new, it's not a new Scarhoy controller, it's new to me because I haven't uh, I haven't seen it before, but I'm going to do a killer demo on that because it's only about five inches wide? Five inches by two inches, but at the same time it can control vMix, an ATEM, a TriCaster, PTZ Optics, Ada, Lumens, NewTek PTZ cameras, uh, Sony, Panasonic, JVC. Uh, I may have missed one in there somewhere. So it can control a lot of different things, and I think that's pretty cool. That's pretty impressive. So it's also programmable. That's pretty impressive. So that's the short version. That's the short I'm version. I'm really excited and, to try that one. And what's the retail yeah, on that? That's the rest? really short version. It's a thousand dollars. But you may be saying, how is it possible that such a small box is a thousand dollars? You're also paying for the programming of. 50 different vendors that you have access to control. Now, if you only have one, like vMix, you might be saying, why don't I just use an X keys? I can just plug it in via USB and I can use it to switch my uh, system. And in which case, maybe the, the proposition is not uh, sufficient for you. But if you're looking to have a super small controller that can control vMix and a PTZ camera at the same time, or an ATEM and a PTZ camera, or a TriCaster and a PTZ camera, or vMix and a Lumens camera, or, you know, the list goes on and on, or an AJA router, or, I mean, there's a list of like 100 vendors and all the different, if you want to control Blackmagic hyper, uh, Hyperscope or a uh, Hyperdeck to start and stop record on that, all of that programming is included in that $1,000. So while it sounds expensive, the amount of software that is inside this thing is beyond comprehension of mere mortals. And I fit well into that category, indeed. Yeah, but it goes under the category, I can tell, of the right tool for the job. You know, there, yes. it, when, when you're in that situation and you need a multifunction controller like that, it's going to be the right tool for that job. Yes, it is. While he's doing that, I uh, want to welcome Marie. And let's see who else has popped in while we weren't working. Uh, look, at Rod is here. Gabby is here. What? And now we're just uh, just going through the list of folks that, that have just popped in. Um, OK. Rich wants to know, can you make multiple commands in one sequence? Yes. Are we talking HTTP matrix or Scarhoy? Ooh, that's a good question. The answer is four, yes. It was four minutes ago. And the answer is yes, no matter which device you're, whether you're talking about the software or the hardware. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Cliff. So, so essentially, you could have one button on the Scarhoy, execute a vMix command, a PTZ Optics command, and an ATEM command, and a TriCaster command with one button. All at the same time. Yes. All at the same time. Super cool. Yep. Super cool. And right. with HTTP matrix, what you would do is you would just have it do all of those commands at the same, you would just schedule them all for the same time. Uh -huh. And since they're scheduled all at the same time, it wouldn't drop one because another one was operating at that time, would it? Correct. Okay. You have to think about that one for a second. That's okay. I did. I was trying to work through the, the programming. It would actually be better. What would be a cooler implementation is if the text file could fire off, like the each button could have multiple commands. That's going to take a little bit more thinking. Because, yeah, that would take a little bit of rewiring of the way that it works. If it's a strong need, if somebody's like, oh, what I really need is I need one button that fires off multiple API commands. I have to test. I don't know how V. No, VMix does. Yeah, I actually had this problem during programming where it was firing off eight commands simultaneously. That's why it took five hours instead of one. Um, and it did. And the problem was is that I was starting and stopping record eight times all at once. And VMix did cope with it. Um, not well because you're, you're not supposed to start and stop recording eight times within a few milliseconds of each other. Um, but it should be able to take multiple API commands if I feed them right. I'll have to think about it a little bit. But if you just want the, if you just want to schedule a bunch of commands at the same time, you can do that. I would suggest putting them like a second apart. But yeah. 
Yeah, I always worry about that when I've got a bunch of shortcuts together. But I was, what was I doing the other day? I wanted to fire off three videos at the same time so that I could make them pretend like they were cameras for instant replay. And, and, and each of the videos was exactly the same length and they fired off all exactly at the same time. Because after looping them for cool. about 30 times, they were still in sync. Um, so that was pretty cool. That's yes, great. Jan yeah. and Marie, we are in post-show. You missed the show because you guys have gone off of uh, the summertime time in Europe, and we have not. We go, off, we go off daylight savings time this coming weekend. So my apologies for those of you that are joining us now expecting a show. This is Eric, and he did a great job. <laughs> what more can you say? What did we cover today, Tom? Well, Eric, we covered... The super basic vMix scheduler that basically, basically, that very the basically. Is super basic vMix scheduler? It is the super it basic. It really depends on where you put the emphasis. vMix scheduler or, or the pause as the case may be. That's right. It's the super basic vMix scheduler that can be basically programmed using a, some high powered software that comes natively on your PC called Notepad. So there you go. It's fancy. And I'm going to be using that next week. In fact, I might be using it later today. In fact, I might use it now. Oh, I've been remiss. Uh-oh, there is a price. Um. I knew it. <laughs> it expires in three days. No, the... the it steals all your credit card numbers. The price is that... No, I, I forgot. Well, it's, it's good that at least we're in post-show. Um... Let me zoom out a little bit. I have not even mentioned our amazing turbo. No, that's true. You have it. But people have commented I, I on it. I am remiss. <sighs> what a lousy salesman I am. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, Well, in a nutshell, this is a portable vMix system. You can buy them through Tom. They're portable. This one has an i9-9900K with an RTX 2070. If those numbers all mean gibberish to you, then it's a really cool portable box that can do all of your production super fast. If that's not gibberish to you, these are this is the fastest portable system on the market right now. And it's Svelte. And by Svelte, I mean you cannot gauge how attractive it is unless you see it in person, which you would have had to have gone to NAB New York or IBC or coming up, Profusion, which happens to be the same exact time as WFX. Now, tell me, where would you rather go? Toronto or Orlando in November? I mean, it's easy. <laughs> I had a choice of going to Orlando or Toronto. Guess where I'm going? You're going heading Toronto. north. I'm heading south. Yes, yeah. indeed. That's okay. Yep. That's okay. So yes, it, I, I look forward to get my, my typical free dealer demo on the uh, that big i9 monster. Yep. Um, after Profusion, I will be sending them out for eval. So after Ooh. the after WFX, okay. they'll be on the road. That you can't have it as long as you've had that splice. Well, you keep telling me to hold on to it until you tell me where to send it next. So I'm waiting. I should. I'm I keep waiting, waiting for, for you direction. to do a show with it. <laughs> That's not likely to happen. I am a creature of... <laughs> what? Of, you can't do a show with a two-input vMix box? I... I I guess I, I guess that would be a really good challenge. You've only you're only using one camera input. Everything else is coming in VMix call. Oh, I've, but I've got five clips. cameras hooked up and twelve microphones and eighteen keyboards and for those occasions when you have a panel. That's right. That's right. No, I'm a creature of habit, you know, <laughs> and. And while I don't mind playing with things, I don't want to use new tools for my, my, my day job until I've tested them. Well, that's why I've left it in your hands so long that it can't know. possibly be considered new. Jeez. 
After a couple months, it's got to be considered old. Jesse wants to know that what are um, the specs on the i9 portable system? i9. <laughs> i9 9900K RTX 2070 is the GPU. Um, I believe it comes with 32 gigs of RAM. Not all that much hard drive, but it has two removable SSD bays. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Do you want to see the removable SSD bays? I want to see how you connect cameras to it. Ah. Now, this camera is a little touchy. Oh, and there it went. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's a little touchy. Oh, it's gone. For some reason, well, I'll just use the PTZ. Oh, there we go. Uh, and cut. How about now? All right. So we're looking so, at um, a four-port SDI. Yeah. This is actually 6G SDI. This is okay. the new Yuan uh, four-channel 6G. So this is 4K SDI, but that's not the standard Turbo X. The standard Turbo X comes with a HD SDI four-channel, but it does come with a four-channel 4K HDMI. Uh, because they're only a hundred dollars more than the HD HDMI's, I figured, why not? We can do right. 4K region of interest with it, or if you so desire, you can do 4K production with it. So you can be super cool on YouTube. Yep, and it looks like I can hook up uh, three Display Ports or an HDMI monitor. Yes. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, there are eight USBs. Um, so okay. there's four USB 3.0s, two USB 3.1s, and two possibly USB 2.0s. Okay. And Wi-Fi? Uh, there, there's uh, Wi-Fi connectors, so you can yeah. hook up your antenna. Um, yeah. And that's about it for the base models, but we can actually build these uh, systems with... Um, they can be custom designed, so if you wanted to have SDI output... Uh, those can go into another uh, slot, um, yep. or um, that's pretty much the only common option is SDI out. Okay. Because right. obviously you can use the HDMI outs of the GPU. Right. So what's the screen size? 17 inches. 17 inches. How much does it weigh? Yep. Uh, about 20 pounds. Okay. It's, uh, it's not super heavy, but um, I walked 11, on my way back from IBC, I walked 11 miles. It was a really, it was one of those travel days where you just wish. Basically, my, uh, my flights kept getting delayed uh, every step of the way, and then they just kept adding new steps. They're like, oh, no, you're not going to Boston. You're going to New York. Oh, you have to go to Boston from New York. And then I missed my flight in New York back to Boston. So I was traveling for about 30 hours, and I did 11 miles of airport walking with this thing over my shoulder because I didn't have the, um, the roller case with me, uh, which is what I ship it in. So 20 pounds does add up if you've got it on your shoulders for 11 miles. But <laughs> you can always just use the roller case, in which case it doesn't weigh anything at all. All right, all right. Love it that it's got a story. And it has a nice little handle on it, which I've put uh, this um, Logitech camera on because I couldn't figure out a way of another way of doing my audio, which is why my audio, if you listen, there's that hum. This thing is super quiet, but if you do put an omnidirectional mic on top of it, it will make a little bit of noise. Well, it is it, it water cooled. Okay. Doesn't that seem scary? Yeah. Th this thing has liquid inside of it. It's liquid cooled. Yeah. But it's yeah. actually, we've we've had an extraordinary, they're actually more reliable and lighter and quieter. And those are all three things that are important to customers. So water-cooled it is. Um, so it has this really nice handle on it. Um, powers on the other side. Um, it's really it's just a computer with a screen on it. I don't mean to make it sound underwhelming, but it really does solve a certain class of problems for live production professionals. Um, for the price, a lot of people, uh, especially in the VMIX community, might say, why not just have a screen? 
and that is an option is that you can just drag a screen around with you but this doesn't require you to drag a screen around with you and you can actually hook other screens up to it and it makes for a powerful and compact portable system with a handle. Right, right. Um, if that's right. worth the premium that you pay for this gorgeous enclosure, then that's uh, that's the question that you need to ask yourself. Yeah, I've, I've priced out building some based on that s a similar footprint, and the case was two mm -hmm. or $3,000. Holy cow. Yeah. Yep, it, it is. adds a lot to and the And that's, for, for us, that's actually with nothing in it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. this right. system, after you case. buy it through no power reseller, supply, yeah, just a just the monitor, yeah. It is a it is a specialty tool. It is not for everybody. Um, that said, sales on it are not shabby um, because there is a market for people for whom with which the base model here is a little under eight thousand. So um, ah. that's that's the entry price for a portable system with a copy of vMix and for uh, inputs. If you want to get into 4K, um, this model with the i9 and the RTX 2070, um, which is capable of 4K uh, production, is 9999, not 99.99. Really? Uh, I was gonna, I was going to peg it at about 15. That's good. So 99.99. Yeah. All right. Yep. 9995. Zero zero. It's not nine. Right, take it. It's not That's, 99 dollars. That's really amazing. I guess it depends too yeah. on because you're going to have to equip it with some um, some extra drives, but that's okay. Those are fairly cheap. Good deal. Yeah, and actually, yeah, drives are cheap, and you can just pop them in the SSD base. You don't need to install them at all. Right. You can just hot swap them at your leisure. Right. Um, yeah. So there's that. Uh, the Scarway stuff is selling really well. Uh, I am actually using an Ada camera today uh, to do that uh, do that down shot this little guy here it's an older one of the older USB ones they're coming out with a 4k USB um, I actually have so you guys can probably still hear me while I go and grab this uh, Tom's actually had one of these in his shop which for some bizarre reason isn't working for him but this is the one that I'm gonna send him because I know this one works <laughs> Oh, Tom, why do I even come on these shows? This uh, this one has 4K HDMI out, and it's got an interchangeable lens on it. Uh, and it's, what, six, $600? It's it's, uh, it's a pretty good price. You got a really wide lens on it. Um, 4K HDMI, iris uh, control, if you have a lens that has iris, takes C slash CS mount. Um, and I use this with a, uh, what did I do with my, I have one of those things that I sent you too. The up oh, I the put yawn. it on the hang on. Big shout out to Dan and Mark that have just joined us. We're the we're the place to come in late today. Yeah. This rather featureless looking small white box is a Yuan 4K HDMI. Uh, capture it. So it's got USB-C on one side and it's got HDMI on the other. And you can take this camera, connect them via an HDMI cable, and plug this USB into your copy of vMix and you can get 4K into vMix for under a thousand dollars for the two of them. Assuming it works. Can't wait to try it. See, yeah. I think that has a lot of potential for being a good little studio camera in a 1080p production. So you use the vMix Virtual Studio and you chip chop that little rascal up into four or five different looks. Um, or you don't even have to do that. You, mm -hmm. just, you just zoom in up wherever you want to. And, it, and it's as if it's panning and tilting, but it's not. Yep. I can't, I can't wait to try it. So I what Tom... To try it. What what Tom's referring to is what uh, I affectionately call uh, here, com of here comes the interpretation of what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, region of interest is something that vMix, uh, you need the 4K version of vMix to do because this is actually coming in 4K, but we're not producing in 4K, we're producing in HD. 
So we take this window of 4K video and we can move an HD window uh, around on that 4K image and we can zoom in and out on it so it actually looks like we can have virtual camera movements. So for $1,000 you can get a virtual P, it's not PTZ, it's not tilting, it's panning and zooming. So you can um, define different regions and you can cut back and forth between them instantly. So if you have two guests and you have one PTZ camera, if you want to go back and forth between those guests, you have to physically move the camera head. In a 4K region of interest environment, you can just cut back and forth because the computer sees the whole image and vMix is able to um, isolate those uh, as virtual inputs and you can do one of two things. You can cut back and forth between them or you can actually ask the vMix to slide back and forth between them, between all of your different presets. And it really adds a lot to your production. I like My it. explanation it's got a really was nice much shorter it. and much simpler and yeah. Just like HTTP matrix, short and simple. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Super basic, yes. Well, Eric, I've got to I gotta go back to work here. I, I could hang out and have fun Super all Super basic afternoon. region of interest. And uh, I see what, there are a bunch of folks me? in chat like Martin Stuckey that, that apparently and Andrew's here. You know, you, these guys are just showing up late because they're they're in the wrong time zone across the way and they've gone back on regular time. Um, and so they're coming in late. Sorry guys, you'll have to you'll if you're watching on YouTube you can just take the D V R and just drag it right back. So Tom, you're not Eric. going to leave me alone with these animals, are you? No, I'm cutting the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you just want to stay on and uh, and chat with them, that's no yeah. problem. You're you're welcome yeah, to do that. We've had folks do that before. I, I've got my pulpit. <laughs> no, it's fine. We'll wrap it up. I have uh, okay. I have a I think I have a phone call coming in okay. here soon. Yeah. But if anybody has any questions, please you know feel free. If you want to know more about HTTP Matrix, um, you know, drop a drop a question in the forum. Um, if any of this other stuff looks cool, uh, it's all available through Tom. Um, other than that, uh, thanks for sitting around and watching Tom and I monologue. That was, that was fun. It wasn't a monologue. It was a it was a, a gripping discussion. <laughs> yeah, riveting. Yeah, it was fun. Yep. And see, here's, I'll leave that, I'll leave that closing thought. Closing thought is people in any industry, but especially our industry, get so intimately acquainted with what's going on with the industry that they forget that people that are coming into the industry new don't know the language. They don't have the, the basic concepts and, and, and as somebody that came into the industry with no industry experience, um, it, it was a long ramp up in terms of understanding what's going on. And as you can tell, there's still still holes in my knowledge like this, like this region of interest stuff. Um, I, I never would have thought about calling it a region know. of interest. I mean, a region of interest to me is like the Middle East. That's a region of interest. Mm -hmm. um, but, but now that I know, I'll call it by the right thing and everybody else will be impressed and they won't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, that's true. yeah. But that's my role as a streaming idiot is to, um, to translate, to take, take, take your stuff and put it down on my basic level so that I can understand it. And if I can understand it, then certainly Jesse and Cliff can understand it. By the way, Jess, Jesse was at the uh, Streaming Idiots meetup last year too. He was doing, he's doing a show on craft beers. Mm. And Cliff has got the entrepreneurs. Um, oh gosh, Cliff, what's the name of the show? Um, I was on the show three weeks ago. Cliff's got a great studio in New York that he's built in a warehouse with uh, like 20 foot ceilings. Um, and uh, and if he's if he's paying attention, he's going to pop in with the name any minute minute now. But he's not paying attention, so that's okay. All right, well let's wrap her up. Eric, it was great. Yeah, there you go, Cliff. You resemble that remark. Now tell me the name of your show. Um, he'll have it. He'll 
anatomy of an entrepreneur. There you go. Thank you very much. That's it. That's it. It's good stuff. All right. Thank you, Jesse. Thanks, everybody. And, oh, Cliff said he met you at NAB. It's and entirely he was, possible. He was walking around at NAB. Yeah. Good-looking guy. Yeah. Looks kind of like me. Yeah. NAB New uh, York, I might have remembered. NAB at this point was just kind of a blur. This was NAB New York. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we met. Yeah. I mean, gotcha. All right. You're a champ. Thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. And um, I can't wait to get Thanks, the 4K camera fun. and test it out. And I can't wait to get the uh, i9 uh, luggable. And um, I'll, it'll probably be one of those deals where I'll get it and I, I won't send it back because uh, I will have sold it. Um, so there we go. That's how it works. Fair enough. Uh, where can we find Cliff's show? Cliff, uh, give, give him the URL. <laughs> In the, it, it, <laughs> then it, never mind. Never mind. All right. You need to have a show of shows where you just have everybody come on who's got a show. Oh, that what do you do fun. with your show? That would be fun. And just yes. tell, have people explain their production. They use this copy of vMix. They run it on this kind of computer. They use these kind of cameras. And this is the kind of result that they do. Bingo. Bingo. I love it. I love it. Show of shows. All right. Thank you, Eric. The check Thanks, is in Tom. the mail. We'll catch you later. And we'll let this Cheers. one run out. We'll see you guys next time.